there's any doubt about that. My friends, I travel all around the world, usually at your expense, and I've seen, been to Greenland, I've been to the north, uh, been to Svalbard in Norway, I've been to the South Pole, and I've seen the evidence of climate change and the warming, and we have to address it, and we can address it in a way that doesn't require us to sacrifice our lifestyles. We have to address it in a way of developing technologies, which many corporations in America are doing right now, including General Electric, the world's largest corporation, that will allow us to advance in green technologies, uh, uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, etc. And by the way, to throw a little controversy in it, uh, you're not going to be able to reduce greenhouse gases emissions significantly unless nuclear power is part of the equation uh, when we look at all of the other alternate energy uh, sources. But we're going to have to enter into discussions with companies and corporations like these to see where areas where the, where the United States government has going to be having some assistance. Um, we can't have everybody going out of business. Thank you. And say goodbye. Yes, go you uh, talked about the uh, temporary work program, program and uh, sending people back to their country um, before they could come back to the United States. How would you manage that um, at a high level um, to make sure that they are fulfilling what they need to before they come back? In the uh, case of uh, the, they would have to go back for just to basically what we call touch base uh, one time to the country of their origin. During that period, they would have, it would be found out whether they had any criminal background, any illegal activity, et cetera, et cetera. And then they would come back and in order to work, they would have to have tamper-proof biometric documents. And those documents would also be kept track of. And so that every employer would have the confidence that, that those employers would not be hiring someone who is in this country illegally. And if the employer goes ahead and hires people that don't have those documents, then that employer should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. And if someone comes across our border illegally after we have this system set up, then that person probably should go to jail. It's, I mean, we've got to get tough. We've got to get tough on both employers who hire people illegally and people who come across our border illegally. There's some very tough provisions uh, associated with it. So what we would say to these 12 million people, okay, come identify yourselves and uh, we will put you in this status and we will go through the steps that I told you about and you can be in this status. Now, some people don't want to be citizens and they can work for two years and a temporary worker basis go back to the country they came from for a year come back for two years go back to the country they came from for a year and then come back for two more years but that's because temporary means temporary and uh i i think it'll work a 99 out of 100 employers in america want to do it legally they don't want to hire people illegally and we're going to give them a way for them to hire people illegally, and by the way, it's a competitive wage, and, uh, and, and, and address this issue and bring these 12 million people out of the shadows. Is it a very, very big job? Yes, but it's been a long time in the making. As you know, over 20 years, we've had broken borders, and we've had millions of people come into our country illegally. I hope that clears that up for you. Is it gonna be easy? No. <laughs> um, what about our northern border? Um, when I think of terrorists trying to get into this country, our northern border is so much larger and so much more porous. Where you know we can. But the difference is between our southern border and our northern border. In all due respect to our friends in Mexico, is that we don't have corruption on the northern border. We have a very hard-working, although not big enough, border patrol on the northern side of our border. I think that unless we have the entire provisions of this bill and people are not, unless people know that they can't 
get a job if they get across our borders, we're still going to have people coming across our borders. The key to this and the reason why it has to be comprehensive is because even if they get across our borders, unless they've gone through the procedures I described, they're not going to get a job. So the northern border is, they can probably still come through, as you know, a couple of the 9-11 guys came across uh, the northern uh, border terrorists. But our biggest problem is on the southern border. And by the way, as an added point, I'd like to give you a little good news, and that is the new president of Mexico is a good person. He is committed to enforcing the border. He's committed to cleaning up some of the corruption down there. And I'm sure you've heard some of these towns on the border have literally been taken over by drug gangs, and he's trying to fight it as hard as he can. They have extradited some drug dealers to prisons in the United States from the rather comfortable surroundings that they had in Mexico uh, prisons. So I'm optimistic that we'll get a lot more cooperation in the future out of the Mexican government. The question is, has the corruption and the drugs become so bad that any government in Mexico can control it? And frankly, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I have to believe they can, but it's going to be very, very, very tough as you know. <laughs> Uh, Senator McCain, what is the best way for us as a general American populace to become informed about what our senators and congressmen are doing in terms of spending other issues as well? It seems to me that you know there's just so much information, it's hard for me to figure out what's accurate, what's not, about maybe like our my own senator, my own congressman, to figure out what he's doing in terms of uh, spending and so forth. There are, there are various watchdog organizations, uh, some of them like the Citizen, Citizens Against Government Waste, National Taxpayers Union, there's many others. You can go online literally with any of these watchdog organizations and they rank every member of Congress on a broad variety of issues. If you're interested in, in the physical side, Citizens Against Government Waste, uh, National Taxpayers Union, others if you're interested in social conservatives, there's people who grade them, National Right to Life and others, and NARAL on the other side of the issue. So all you really need to do is find out the organizations that are legitimate, that are legitimate, that uh, the Chamber of Commerce gra grades people on, on their pro or anti-business uh, positions. And so there's, uh, I think that's probably the best way to do that. The second thing I think is if it's a particular issue that you're interested in, then I think you ought to write your congressman, our senator, and say, how do you vote on this and why? Uh, and I think it's our obligation to respond and to uh, explain. But as far as the overall records are concerned, I would recommend those various organizations that keep track of, of the votes. They're not infallible, but they're certainly a, a good guideline. And I hope that you will use them more often because sometimes we present the issue a little bit differently than, than we vote, but hardly ever, of course. <laughs> yes, sir. Senator McKean, while I appreciate your uh, support of the troops uh, today, I also am concerned about uh, what kind of support they and their families will receive once they're out of the military, once they're back from the war. I believe I believe it's you that actually has a commercial in support of the families today, of the troops of today. Um, not only what are you a part of now, what are you participating in now, but should you become president, what are some programs that you might introduce? I don't, I, I don't have any commercials up, but um, uh, I, a terrible thing happened, as you know, not long ago. We found out the terrible conditions at Walter Reed Hospital. I am responsible for that. Um, I went to Walter Reed and go to Walter Reed all the time and I go to the hospital rooms and I would go to the rehab place and I did not know that people, American servicemen were existing in those conditions and all of us who were supposed to be doing our job are responsible. I'd like to, I carry around with me uh, this little quotation that I read all the time. It's from George Washington in 1789, George Washington, 1789. The willingness with which our young people are likely to serve in any war, no matter how justified, shall be directly proportional as to how they perceive the veterans of earlier wars were treated and appreciated by their country. George Washington said that in 1789. It's more true today than it's ever been. 